Hello everyone. We are group number three, and we are going to present uh, how our blog day was spent and what are the things that we have learned at RGC Bajo and at Mega Farm. We started our journey from college campus at 8:50 a.m. And, and we reached at DC Bajo at 9.50 am After reaching there, we are gathered and Dr. Mohish Kimiri briefly talked on the morphology of rice and he also talked on the variety of rice grown in there After that, he guided us to visit the field and practically teach us the morphology of rice and the variety of rice grown in there so my friend will um, explain what are the things that we have learned in there while reaching in a field we learn about the different morphological parts of a rice and firstly we learn about the uh, detailed morphological parts of i64 and i will be describing about the leaves and we all know that the leaf consists of leaf shade leaf blade auricle and a ligule. Firstly, the leaf shape. Leaf shape is a cylindrical and it encloses the main or developing leaves and it supports the vegetative growth of a plant. And leaf blade is usually long and elongated, which helps in uh, transpiration and it is a photosynthetically active. And third, we have leaf ligule, which is a thin uh, tissue, white triangular membrane. Uh, which help in regulate the moisture and it help in prevention preventing the entry of rainwater. Fourth, we have uh, auricle which is located at the boundary of sheath and a collar, uh, which help us to distinguish the rice from banyard grasses. And we also learn about the leaf angle, which determines the photosynthesis and a respiration and. When the leaf angle is more erect, there will be more light interception and uh, more photosynthesis takes place. Now let me talk on the panicles. Uh, while we are visiting the field, Dr. Uh, Mohish Gimiri explained us about the panicles, which the panicle axis extend from panicle uh, extend from panicle base to the apex. And, and he also explained us about the panicle contain a, a, reproductive, a reproductive organ and it consists of a, reg, a neg knot, brackets, secondary and primary branch, pericells and spiculates. Now let me talk on the pericells. Pericells formed from not at the tip of the primary branch and all the knots of the secondary uh, branches and spiculates from the knot uh, spiculates at the end of the uh, uh, pedicels now let me talk let me talk on the spiculates spiculates contained um, flora pot a set of flora plot and which is supported by the lemma and pilia. The flower consists of six stamens and pistils. Dr. Mohish Gimari explained us and shows us uh, explained us the flora flora plot and shows us the uh, sterile lemma which is like a uh, calyx like structure and also he shows us the rudimentary gloom, regular uh, and Pelia and Lemma. Now let me talk on the grain. Most of the while we're visiting the field, we have seen that most of the grain are in uh, milky stage, and uh, some are about to mature. Now I will be talking about roots, clump, and a tiller. Let me first talk about the roots. Though there are two types of root, there is embryonic root and a secondary advantageous root, but we have seen only about the secondary advantageous root, uh, which is basically long and elongated, which can cling, 
cling to soil particles very well and support the plant from growth to the maturity stage. It also replaces the uh, embryonic roots and it also helps to uh, prevent the soil erosion. Now, clump. Clump is the plant main st stems and it is made up of series of nut and uh, internode. And thirdly, tiller. Tiller, the main clump is also known as primary tiller and a primary tiller give rise to the secondary tiller and a secondary uh, tiller give rise to the tertiary tiller. Each individual tiller is a independent plant. Let me continue our presentation. I'm going to talk on rice varieties that the ARTC Bajo has grown this year. When we visited their paddy fields, guided by our Sir Mahesh Kimire, we came to know about many rice varieties. I'm going to talk on few rice varieties such as IR64, Mabja, and then black rice. So if I elaborate a bit on each of the rice varieties, IR64, which was released in the year 1988, it is a high yielding and semi dwarf varieties, which is about 80 to 90 centimeter tall. And then it matures in 145 to 150 days after showing. This varieties is also very responsive to higher fertilization and the best thing is it is very it is an old days and improved varieties next we came to know about black rice which is which was brought from assam and it has a longest rice of about 140 140 cm long and then when we measured it has a tiller tiller of about 9 and then spilet 150 spilet and then if I elaborate on Ngabja varieties, it is a Japonica type and it takes about 120 days to mature and it, it is the very expensive rice varieties. About fertilization, they have incorporated azola or mini modified fun as a, as a green manure which suppresses the wheat and provides nutrients to the soil. Sir Mahesh also told us about some of the rice diseases such as shed blight and leaf blight. In certain areas, the leaf, the rice were affected by shed blight where the stem were dried and grain were turned into chaff formation. Uh, we also did a characterization in direct seeded rice in, in the field and we find the length of the panicle that is 24 cm, length of the leaf 40 cm, height of the plant 1.02 meter and the width of the leaf that is 1.5 centimeter by using the ruler. And we found that the number of tiller that is only seven, it's because the Dr. Mahesh Kimire told that the less number was due to the direct seeded rice and the, we have found the spike leaves that is 263 and we have also calculated the um, LV ratio using the burner caliper and the formula for finding the LV ratio is the length of the grain divided by breadth of the grain. We have found that the LV ratio of the particular grain was found up to 3.54 mm. On reaching integrated farm, we did several practicals out of which bulk density is the one. Bulk density by definition, it is the weight of a soil in a given volume. Soil with higher bulk density tends to restrict root growth. Soil bulk density increases with compaction and depth, which means the higher the density, the less pore, less pore space for water movement, penetration, and settling germination. So, continuing on the procedure, aims, and materials required. Firstly, the main aim of conducting the experiment was to determine the bulk density of a given soil sample in a unit area that is to conducted in mega farm or integrated farm. And regarding the materials required, the materials required for conducting the experiments are hammer, metal ring, um, speed, and tree. To further continue on with the procedure, bulk density measurement was done in small unit area at integrated farm. To account for variability, we took about several samples uh, at a different plot of the same field, in which we took about six samples randomly. Uh, 
the method uh, we used for uh, collecting the bulk density is by collecting a non volume of uh, uh, soil using metal ring pressed into the soil and the uh, weight is determined after drying and going on to the importance that uh, there are quite a number of points firstly it is used to calculate the soil properties in a unit area secondly it gives a good indication of su soil suitability uh, uh, for root growth and soil plant atmosphere system which means generally it is desirable to have soil uh, soil with a lower bulk density and lastly it is useful to measure when comparing management practices like when comparing cultivated to non-cultivated as physical properties are altered uh, now I will talk about a soil sampling. It is a critical step in obtaining an accurate soil test. Uh, it is usually performed for a soil test to determine a nutrient content, its composition and other characteristics such as pH and acidity of a soil. Uh, careful soil sampling is essential for accurate uh, fertility recommendation. Uh, for a peer selection, uh, soil should possess uh, similar characteristics. Uh, materials required for a soil sampling are auger, tray, and a spit. Uh, regarding our procedure, we selected a field consisting of a different uh, beds, and we collected a sample from a various beds in a zigzag way. Then we mixed, uh, uh, mixed all the samples in the tray and removed the twigs. Uh, then we took uh, the mixed sample for analysis in the lab. Moving on to the next topic, it is a nursery raising. Nursery raising, by definition, it is a place or a managed site, and basically is established for handling or raising of a young plant before the time of a transplantation or before until they are ready for permanent transplantation. So there are basically uh, quite a number of importance for nursery raising. First one, it provides a possible or favorable growth condition. Second, easy with control. And thirdly, it reduces field management cost. Fourth, it uh, improves crop, crop uniformity. And lastly, it enhances the higher yield. Thank you. Uh, usually, there are three types of swing. They are line, uh, dibbling, and uh, broadcasting. In dibbling method, we create a hole in the ground for a seed and then cover with the soil. And in line method, uh, we uh, sow seeds in the line in the main, uh, main field. Uh, it ensures a better germination and intercultural operations uh, compared to the other two. And in broadcasting, uh, we just scatter uh, seeds in the surface and then cover with the soil. Uh, regarding the seed, uh, we brought a bucket full of water and then soaked a seed in it and kept it for some time. Then we took out the potted ones and then drained out the water and we used the remaining seeds uh, for the sowing. With this, we have come to an end of our video presentation. Thank you for watching. Thank you.